acquisition of value. It is the fifth dimensional entities of control that are actually the agents of the cosmic evolution of spirit. They are in charge of the third and fourth dimensional evolutive vehicles that represent the climax of the involution of spirit into matter. The term of the climax of this spiritual involution is brief in the scale of cosmic history. For this reason, the fifth dimensional entities must be fully prepared with absolute knowledge and wisdom in order to properly guide the evolutive vehicles. They must be filled with electronic charges. This they acquire by contact with their hands passing over the energy fields of trees, plants and giant animals in planets and planetoids where the human type has not existed. This process takes millions of years. This is how the fifth dimensional self acquires wisdom. These twin entities of control in time attach themselves to planets with life where human types will be seeded. On this planet, those fifth dimensional mother-father beings are known as the planetary Manitou, containing all the codes for the evolutionary forms and stages of life and consciousness. Evolution By means of acquisition of electrical charges, the fifth dimension entities of control form in the palm of their hands six small centers of energy, which later form the six fourth dimensional electronic mental spheres, which will be inserted into the human types. At this point, the fifth dimensional entities are prepared and filled with electronic charges, information bits, of all aspects of creation. But before they can assume their role with their outlets, the third and fourth dimensional evolutive vehicles, they must experience a seventh dimensional activation. Plasmatic involution, activation phase. This represents a total clarification of the electrical charges placed into and forming the Akashic records of the higher selves. These are the charges obtained from the process of acquisition of value and also known as the book of clear records the sum of all the electrical charges of all the fifth dimensional higher selves. These form the seventh dimensional, seventh mental sphere. When the fifth dimensional entities of control receive the transfer of the seventh dimensional plasma charges that will later arise in them, they return to form a part of the seventh dimension. This represents pure spiritualization of the origins of spirit. Now the higher self, fifth dimensional entities, are actually fifth seven dimensional operands who can transfer imprints of Akashic records, karmic thought memories, into planetary cybanks, noospheres, and individual soul matter. This is also how, at time of death of the third and fourth dimensional evolutive vehicles, they can make evaluation according to Akashic records and help direct souls to the next birth. Evolutive Planes Shifts of angels take turns, staying with each one of you. They are in front of you and behind you. They stay with you and guard you in accordance with God's commands. Quran 13.11 Evolution through intentional thinking or evolutive planes pertains to the actual creation of the human type for the advancement of the soul. The soul is the carrier of the divine consciousness from spark to remembrance to return and re-emergence with the source. Though it is God who commands the creation, Adam, he blows into him from his spirit. This is the fifth dimensional soul essence blown into the third and fourth dimensional evolutive vehicle. The angels bow down because now their evolutive vehicle is ready. This represents the primal coming together of the fifth dimensional mother-father, primal Adam, primal Eve, entities of control resulting in the first evolutive plane, the humanoid. The 5D mother-father spirit is brought together again for the creation of the superhuman, the fourth evolutive plane. According to cosmic science, each of the evolutive planes lasts for 26,000 years, 
one dream spell. These evolutive planes represent the climax of the entire evolution of cosmic history. They are the cause of the long preparation of the fifth dimensional higher selves. Finally, they have the opportunity to guide and monitor the nature and consequences of intentional thinking and law of karma dharma. Here follows a description of the three evolutive planes. A. Humanoids, the primal Adam. At this stage, the mental spheres are rather small, becoming gradually enlarged from the humanoids meeting the challenges aroused in them from their environment. It is the release of insulin and adrenaline that cause the enlargement of the mental spheres. This corresponds to the stratum of nature presents itself. This is the plane of pure instinctual mind as it advances into thinking or conceptualization. B. Cavernicola, Cave Dweller This is the evolutive plane of the reactive mind, where conceptual reactions gradually replace pure instinct. Here are learned the rudiments of material and aesthetic cultural behavior. Tribal life is evolved. Material survival is secured. But language is still in the telepathic instinctual stage. The mental spheres are now capable of intentional thinking. The new reactive mind learns from nature. The mental spheres continue to enlarge, finally giving rise to the third plane. C human. In this plane, intentional thinking to the maximum gives rise, at the same time, to the application of the third cosmic law, Karma Dharma. This is the phase of the actual free will soul test, the last 26,000 years or dream spell of history. Here incarnate the lost planetary souls. In this plane, the fifth dimensional higher selves follow their evolutive vehicles as they undergo successive incarnations, interchanging sexuality. After each third and fourth dimensional incarnation, the electrical charges are clarified and transformed into heptocubic quantos. These forms further the experience acquired throughout by the two evolutive vehicles for the fifth dimensional selves' own evolution. It is important to understand that the third and fourth dimensional vehicles exist for the purpose of the fifth dimensional acquiring experience in the lower planes. The fifth dimensional self is always operating by the first cosmic law, unity of the dimensions. The evolutive vehicles exhibit every form of intentional thinking and test every aspect of the law of Karma Dharma. This process reaches a critical stage in the Gregorian years, AD 1970-2012. This is precisely the point of the conception of the superhuman. At this concluding phase, the human experiences 1260 degradation, exhausts all its karmic trials, and reaches a stage of information saturation. By the closing of the cycle, the fifth dimensionals have acquired sufficient electrical charges to transit to the next phase. Do you not realize that God has created heavens and the earth for a specific purpose? If He wills, He can remove you and substitute a new creation in your place. 1419 Superhuman Homo Noospherecus is the fourth or 4D evolutive plane. This occurs at the 2012-2013 crossing, the threshold into pure continuing conscious 1320 timing frequency. Here the evolutionary trial is fulfilled. Regarding the superhuman phase that began March 7, 1970, the cosmic science root text says, this investigation will lead us in a conscious and constant matter into the higher self. At the same time, we must realize the efforts of telepathic contact and profound meditation, unknown until now, of the total integration of the above-mentioned triad of the fifth, fourth, and third dimensional selves. As mentioned earlier, the point of taking a human birth is to learn to consciously balance and integrate 
those two third and fourth dimensional factors. Then there is the fifth dimensional self, which in this case a high level activated persona that gives you an archetypal mask demonstrating how to continuously surrender your lower self or the I and let the it receive the commands of the higher self. This is the actual living mechanism of the evolution of spirit.